So at the time of recording this, uh, my Wi-Fi is completely out. This is the highest quality image I can find of Money in the Bank, of this logo. So I'm sorry, the Wi-Fi is completely out. I'm using cellular data, and it's not even a good thing either because the whole, it's lagging a lot, it's hard, so... Um, yeah, I'm just recording this with no internet at all, or with no Wi-Fi at all, so bear with me. So, yeah, it's actually fine. I don't really do much on these reviews anyways. But I do talk about all the matches and segments. I, I rank all of them, and I give the whole show a rating at the end of it. And, yeah, that's about it. If you're new here and you watch WWE and you like to hear some reviews about it, I do this, I do this type of stuff like twice, three times, or even four times a week, um, at, like, rare times. But... Yeah, we're starting up now. Uh, men, the men's money to make ladder match started off. It was pretty cool. The my MVP of this match definitely was Andrade, or maybe Carmelo, but I'm gonna pick Andrade for now because that was actually pretty cool. My pick leading into this was Drew McIntyre. They ended up going with Drew McIntyre, which sadly was a little bit of a waste. But it should not take away how good this match was. This was a really good match. Not as good as a women's match, but this match was really good. I liked it. I'm gonna give it a four out of five. I thought Jay would win it for a split second because he was up on that ladder for quite a while, but then McIntyre killed him, so I'm going to give it a 4 out of 5. Next up was the Intercontinental Championship between Braun Breaker versus Sami Zayn. That match was a very that, that match was a slow burner in my opinion. It wasn't it, it was good, but it just wasn't as good as I was expecting because I expected it to be like very fast paced, very just creative in some ways. But no, this is just a basic basic title match which underwhelmed a little bit. I'm going to give it a 3.3 out of 5. I thought Braun Breaker could take uh, at least one or more Haluba, like at least another Haluba kick. And yeah, but then he just lost by one. So I don't know. It just didn't It just didn't make Braun Breaker feel like a beast in any way. And yeah, I'm going to give this one a 3.3 out of 5. Next up was this segment where John Cena came out, basically said how Canadians are awesome. The Canadian fans of WWE are awesome and they stick through with everybody. Now, and then after that, John Cena announced his retirement from the WWE. He would be, he would say his Royal Rumble will be his last, the Elimination Chamber will be his last, and his WrestleMania will be his last WrestleMania. He's not going to retire in at WrestleMania, he's going to retire at the end of 2025 in December. He's looking to do 40 events, he didn't say this, but he's looking to retire at the end of December. So, it's hard to believe, but at the same time, it's not hard to believe. One more year of John Cena and then we're done. Uh, it's going to be really emotional, but hopefully he can finally pick up some wins and stop losing once in a while, but, like, yeah, throw all that throw all that out of the window. Where he puts people over, just throw it out the window because he doesn't need to do that right now in this farewell tour. Next up was a World Heavyweight Championship match between Damian Priest, uh, I mean, Seth Rollins versus Damian Priest. Drew McIntyre ended up cashing in his money to make contract after, or uh, during the match. The, during this match, like, the first seven or eight minutes of this match were, like, really just a five-star classic, in my opinion. They These two put on a banger during On a Raw episode in June of last year. I expected this one to be a little bit less of a banger, but no, it was a lot more. Seth looked like 2015 Seth. It was just so freaking fun to watch. It was just amazing. And then the botched pin happened where I feel like, I don't know, I saw a tweet somewhere where Damien like slammed himself or he got slammed so hard he got dazed and he really couldn't kick out. So that's why. But they could have done something about it where Finn paid him off or something. I have no idea. But yeah, I don't know. That match was really good until that botched pin happened. And then Drew McIntyre came in. And yeah, essentially just, it, it just, the match got only got better. And the match only got better, but at the same time, it just if I felt so conflicted because of it, because they really, uh, they, they like money in the bank is like. Well, at the same time, it's okay, but at the same time, I don't know if it is okay. Like I, I'd rather see someone hold money in the bank briefcase for a little bit, just a little bit, just a little bit. But I did not expect that to happen so fast. I have no idea. But the match got better, but at the same time, it just got weirder. CM Punk came out and screwed McIntyre. Like I think he could have. Uh, in my opinion, I think he could have, what's it called? In my opinion, this was my uh, fantasy booking here. And my, I think CM Punk would have cost, uh, would have uh, stopped Drew McIntyre from cashing in. And then at SummerSlam, when Drew actually tries to cash in, AJ Lee stops him. So that's that's just the fantasy booking that I had. It was just weird that he would cash in right now, but at the same time, I don't know why he made that promise where he would win money in the bank and leave as champion. Like, I don't know. It was just weird. It just made it so obvious at that point. So I'm going to give it a 4.2 out of 5. For the World Heavyweight Championship. Damian Priest ended up retaining, which is pretty cool. I feel like they're already so high up with the CM Punk feud. 
I don't know why they had to use the money to bring briefcase for that, but at the same time, now that we saw CM Punk's promo yesterday, like it it makes a little bit of sense, but at the same time, it just feels conflicting in my opinion. I'm not gonna get mad at it. It's just weird to I don't know. It's just weird for me to judge it. Damien Priest zero ten. I'm gonna give it a four point two out of five, and it ended up being pretty good. And yeah, the match of the night is next right here. The women's money the big ladder match was just so fun to watch. My MVP for this one. I want to say Chelsea, and I want to say Lyra, but I'm going to say EO, because, like, everyone's going to hate me for this, but I think EO was the best one out there, in my opinion. EO is just on this terroristic rampage, and at this point, it just made her seem more of a, more vicious, and it just, I don't know, she was just the, high, the highlight of this whole match right here. Great job at EO, and it's tippy time, Tiffany won money in the bank, I had originally picked Chelsea Green to win, uh, which is fine. It, we're just fine. I expected her to win, but Tiffany is a really good choice as well. Uh, Chelsea ended up taking that nice little bump. Uh, I think that's a callback to, I think, a TNA match. I, I forgot. But she took a bump where she went through. She popped the ladder onto two tables, which is actually pretty sick. And then Tiffany got money in the bag. I hope they customized Tiffany's briefcase to be like a pink Tiffy time briefcase. I have no idea, but uh, we'll see what happens on Friday. I'm going to give this a 4.2 out of 5. That was, that was really fun to watch. And the main event was the Bloodline versus Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, and Cody Rhodes. That match was, once again, it's exactly like the IC title match. A slow burner, but at the same time, it's kind of enjoyable at times. This one, it's, it was like 24 minutes long. For the first 15 minutes, it was a slow burner. It was really just a little bit boring at times as well. It was kind of the worst, that was kind of the worst match of the night. Um, but... Yeah, over time, it just ended up getting better. The rev bump started happening, and then the Jacob Fatu stuff started happening, and all that. And then there was, a t there was a one time where we saw, um, what's it, what's his name? Um, Tonga Loa, Bacha Low Blow. Now, there's only one reasonable conclusion, but I'm not going to say it's an excuse. Or maybe I can't, I just don't know. Just no one's giving Tonga Loa anything. Like, no one's, like, everyone's giving them hard, a hard time. So I'm thinking this is not an excuse here, even if he did have a concussion. Because I feel like Cody did a dive, and uh, Tonga Loa slammed his head hard on the announce desk. I feel like he was just that dazed where he just missed a low blow. Like, he's just dizzy. Like, he just misses a low blow, but then he just gets back and connects it. I don't know, but that's the only th that's the only reason why I did, but that's not an excuse. from as That's what people are making me believe. Like, it's not an excuse that he has a concussion. Like, I think it is because, like, he looked pretty dazed out there, but I guess it's not. So, yeah, but he did, ended up botching a low blow, which is a little bit weird, but okay. Um... But then that just all went south for Cody, for Kevin, Randy, and Cody. Uh, Kevin and Randy just got destroyed on the outside, and then Cody got the spike. And he got speared, I think, and then he got spiked uh, at when Jacob held him up with Solo. Uh, Solo ended up pinning Cody, which is actually a pretty good idea. It makes Solo look strong before before SummerSlam, so I think that's a good idea, actually. For the first time, I, for the, that's the first time I say Solo Sokoa winning is not a problem for me. I'm going to give that a 3.4 out of 5. It was a fine match, just... It was it could have been better, but yeah. So if I had to rank these segments, John Cena's segment obviously goes number one because it was basically the highlight of the night. What people were talking about the most. I'm gonna give it a four. four I gave it a four point four out of five. Number one, the match tonight was the women's money to make ladder match. The women's gimmick match is always the better one. The women's elimination chamber was better. The Royal Rumble was better. Now the money in the bank match was better. Really cool. I'm gonna get yeah. I'm, that's number two. Number three is the World Heavyweight Championship match. Number four is the men's money in the bank ladder match. Number five is the Bloodline versus Kevin Owens, Randy Orton, and Cody Rhodes. And number six, the worst match of the night, was the IC title match between Braun Breaker and Sami Zayn. So, yeah, I don't know. This was, um, yeah, this was a fine, this was not as good. I, like, I, th I thought this PLE would be, like, a bunch more exciting, but, I don't know. It just, everyone is giving it, like, like, everyone's going as low as four out of tens or... Everyone's going a size 9 out of 10. I, thought, I saw it as a 6 out of 10. I'm going to give it a 3.4 out of 5. That's basically equal, in my opinion. But, yeah, I'm going to give it a 3.4 out of 5. It was just, it's for sure the worst PLE of the year, in my opinion. If you guys want, you can rant something in the comments. But, in my opinion, it's the worst PLE of the year. I just, I, I just, I didn't enjoy it as much as I did the others. So, yeah, that's going to do it for this review, though. Thank you all for watching, and just have a good day. Goodbye.